Hello. In this video, we will continue our discussion of applications of the definite integral, specifically looking at how to calculate the areas of surfaces of revolution. There are two videos on this topic. The first one will discuss the process. The second one will actually work through an example. In previous videos, we discussed finding the volumes of solids, some of which resulted when a region was revolved about an axis. In this video, we will consider what happens when we revolve just the boundary curve about an axis of revolution. The result will be a surface, and we can calculate the area of the surface of revolution. We will apply our knowledge from before with the continued theme of partitioning and then summing the pieces, and specifically apply the results from calculating arc length. Suppose we have a curve y equals f of x on the closed interval from 1 to 2, and it is revolved about the line y equals negative 2. We want to find the area of the resulting surface. And as before, we sketch the curve and the resulting 3D surface. Here we have a graph of the function y equals f of x on the interval from 1 to 2. If I want to consider what the 3D surface will be, I consider what happens as I take points along this curve and revolve them around the line y equals negative 2. So given that this point is 3 units above y equals negative 2, I'm going to, this point when it's revolved, will go here. This will go about right here. And here. And we'll get something that looks sort of like that. Computer graphics uh, creates this image. So you can get an idea of what that surface looks like. And as before, we want to partition the curve into n pieces. The curve can be partitioned with respect to the interval on the x-axis, or if the function f has an inverse function, the curve can be partitioned with respect to the corresponding interval on the y-axis. We'll demonstrate both, but we'll first approach this by partitioning the x-axis. So we're going to take the interval from 1 to 2 and partition in small pieces uh, from 1 to 2. So we've got x sub 0, x sub 1, up through x sub k minus 1, x sub k, and we see the resulting um, small pieces on the curve itself. When I consider what those pieces look like as they're revolved around the line y equals negative 2, we see that we would get thin belts or thin bands. And we want to consider the dimensions of those bands um, in order to calculate the area. Let's determine the dimensions of the kth band. The kth band occurs when I take delta s sub k and revolve it around the line y equals negative 2. Now that band, or that belt, if I were to cut it, is going to unroll and basically look like a long, thin rectangle, where one edge has dimensions that are the circumference of a circle when r sub k is equal to top minus bottom, or in this case, y sub k minus a negative 2. And then the width of that rectangle will be delta s sub k. Since I'm partitioning with respect to the x-axis and we want to integrate with respect to x, we're going to require that the dimensions of the kth band be expressed in terms of x. So instead of writing this as r sub k equals y sub k minus a negative 2, I want to change y sub k to be f of x sub k minus a negative 2. For that radius, and then as we, as I said before, as we cut and unroll the band, we get something that resembles a rectangle with dimensions 2 pi r sub k by delta x sub k. So delta script s sub k will give us the area of that basic rectangle, which is approximately 2 pi r sub k times delta s sub k, which I write as 2 pi y sub k plus 2 times delta s sub k, but that radius instead could be written f of x sub k plus 2, and then I multiply times 2 pi and delta s sub k. To find the area of the surface then, I add up those pieces those areas of the belts. I'm going to approximately get the sum, k going from 1 to n, of 2 pi r sub k times delta s sub k. To, I, to get the sum, k going from 1 to n, of 2 pi times f of x sub k plus 2 times delta s sub k. And as I take the norm of the partition and let it go to 0, I'm going to get very thin 
belts. And I'm going to pass to the definite integral. So I get the integral from of 2 pi f of x plus 2 ds. And as you recall, ds could be expressed in terms of x or y, which is why I've not yet put limits of integration on the integral. I can replace ds, therefore, with the square root of 1 plus dy dx squared dx. Integrating with respect to x means that I'm working with the interval on the x-axis, so I put in those limits of integration from 1 to 2. dy dx is simply f prime of x, so I can replace that in the formula so that I can get the surface area of the curve is 2 pi times the integral from 1 to 2 of f of x plus 2 times the square root of 1 plus f prime of x squared dx. Now, this is not one of the formulas currently given in your textbook. And the reason is that your textbook only focuses on uh, finding the areas of surfaces when they're revolved around the x-axis or the y-axis. Since this is revolved about the line y equals negative 2, we need to be able to develop that formula. And you should be able to develop this formula also instead of just memorizing the formulas that are given in the book. Now, suppose this curve, y equals f of x on the interval from 1 to 2, has an inverse function, which we'll call x equals g of y. And we're going to say that the corresponding interval on the y-axis is the interval from 1 to 4. The same curve, same function, is revolved along the line, around the line y equals negative 2. And we want to find the area of the resulting surface. We can go through the same process as before, but instead, Instead of partitioning the x interval, we'll partition the curve in terms of the y interval. So as before, we would sketch the curve, the resulting 3D surface. We'd want to partition the curve into n pieces, this time partitioning the, the y-axis. We're going to consider what happens when the small pieces of the curve, delta s of k, are revolved about the axis of revolution, just as before. And we want to determine the dimensions of the kth band, um, but this time in terms of y, not in terms of x. So here are the bands. And now let's consider the dimensions of the kth band. This delta s sub k is revolved around the line y equals negative 2. We work with the same idea that we would get a circular edge with the width of delta s sub k, where this circular edge has radius r sub k which is simply the top minus the bottom. This is a y value, so we go, we'll say y sub k minus a negative 2. If I cut and unroll the belt, I'm going to get a rect an approximate rectangle where the length of the rectangle is 2 pi times r sub k. The width of the rectangle is delta s sub k. r sub k I can write as y sub k plus 2. So when finding the surface area, I'm going to add up the areas of the belts. So I'm going to get 2 pi times y sub k plus 2 times delta s sub k and sum from k going from 1 to n. Again, I take the norm of the partition and let it go to 0, which passes to the definite integral. And I get the integral of 2 pi y plus 2 times ds. This time, I can write ds in terms of y. So I've got the integral from 1 to 4 of 2 pi times y plus 2 times the square root of 1 plus dx dy squared dy. And then noting that dx dy is simply g prime of y, I can place that instead of dx dy. And I've got the integral from 1 to 4 of 2 pi times y plus 2 times the square root of 1 plus g prime of y squared dy. If we summarize some of the big ideas to take from this video, first, when a curve is revolved around an axis of revolution, if the function has an inverse, then we can choose to partition the interval along the x-axis or along the y-axis. If the x-interval is partitioned, then we integrate with respect to x. And similarly, if the y-interval is partitioned, we integrate with respect to y. Please make sure to take time to carefully sketch the 3D surface. You should be able to identify the radius and length of a band or belt and write these in terms of x or y, depending on the partition with which you're working. And finally, please don't memorize the formulas given in the textbook. You need to be able to develop the Riemann sums and the definite integrals on your own.